your writing career, Har Tree. Alrighty. Well, welcome to this interview with Har Tree Magazine, Eric Hansen, Eric C. Hansen. And uh, I'm the host, Ivana Sanders, uh, also known as the Novelette. And so um, we're happy to be able to have you join us today about your new release. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, um, in early August, um, my book, the collection, it's uh, called All Things Deadly Salem Stories, so set in Salem, Mass. So basically it's a, there's a seven part storyline um, about a father and daughter. He's a former paranormal investigator and he kind of has a troubled relationship with his daughter. Um, so we follow that throughout the, throughout the collection, but it's broken up by stories, you know, all different stories set, you know, in Salem. So that's kind of the structure of the book. Wonderful, just wonderful. I'm so, it, it sounds so interesting and intriguing and especially perfect to come out during, uh, is it coming out in October? No, it came out um, August 6th. August 6th? So it, yeah, so it, it, it's been out, what are we, almost at two months. Yeah, so it's almost been a two months. But yeah, this is the season. It's funny, I have some um, author events coming up, and I just think it's because, you know, the title and then Salem in the title. Like, yes. oh, ha Halloween stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it matches perfectly, and it's very fitting for a horror tree magazine. So for you personally, what would you say, coffee or tea? Um, I don't like tea at all, so coffee. <laughs> so, but I, I, I do love coffee. I, I, I would probably never turn it down. Yeah. Pretty much. I, I, I can drink it at night. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't like ruin my sleep. So, um, I love coffee. Dark, dark coffee, and you know, once in a while I have flavors because my wife does. But I like dark, strong coffee. Yes, I love coffee. I am always drinking it. I have espresso in the morning, usually a vanilla macchiato, and then I might have an Americana throughout the day, uh, maybe a latte at some point at night. <laughs> I like caramel white mochas especially. They're good. Oh, well, I never had one. It sounds good. It is. I do it uh, with coconut milk upside down, so that means there's whipped cream in the bottom. Oh, right. <laughs> So what do you hope is the takeaway for readers about your book? Um, you know, surprisingly, I, I've done some interviews or podcasts and um, some of the early readers have said that they like how the book is structured. So I don't mean it to be like that they should walk away going, wow, it's so unique. Because I personally, like I, I've mentioned when people have said that, how it's set up, oh, it's great, you keep coming back to this main story. I'm like, you know, that's been done before. Like, I'm not, <laughs> this isn't anything that's revolutionary. But I guess may, maybe they haven't seen it in a while. So I guess my a takeaway aside from, you know, I hope they enjoy the book is, you know, you can play around with structure. You can, a collection doesn't just have to be 10 short stories you had published. I know companies, you know, are not really banging down the door or begging for collections. Yeah. And I get, and I, and I get that. Um, but I think you can kind of spice up the collection book instead of it being like, Oh, 10 of you short stories you had published and then come up with a title for it. I think you can, you know, I think there's some possibilities out there to go, Hey, maybe I can actually do something like novella length yeah. and, and break it up. And then that's kind of like your hook to kind of keep them reading, hopefully. And, you know, so just playing around with the form and the structure. So that's really like the takeaway. And then also, you know, the, the possibilities for setting something around a single location, you know, so um, I think that's important for people to do. And, you know, sometimes we, we fixate on characters and, you know, setting and obviously the horror genre is just so important. So. Yes, it's yeah. very true. I did. Um, I do really like the, I, I do like doing short stories. I didn't, I never got into them until about a year ago when I published an anthology called Edge, a killer thriller anthology. And mm -hmm. 
Yes, it was so fun. And um, it was multiple authors. I did one story in it, or two stories actually. And then I had uh, eight other authors who did stories in it. And then I just did a larger anthology uh, with 25 authors. Uh, it was a dark academia anthology with various genres. And um, I like how it's kind of like short stories are like a lead into other larger works that authors do. And I think that that's a really great, I think that's a really great takeaway um, that readers can have about any anthology or short story collection. It's like, this is a little bit of sample of what the larger work of the author could be and will be. And it's like, if you like this, then come over here and read the rest of what I got <laughs> too. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah you know, it, it's a funny thing too with how the, the collection set up. Like I didn't plan on it, but you, you, you know, and I'm sure you're gonna find out when your book comes out, like when it's just, just yours, mm -hmm. that not just positive reactions but when people react and they're like oh i want to know more about that person or oh if there was a novella that continued about these characters and it's kind of like i swear i like never thought of that stuff but then when they start asking for it you know it's amazing you could be on a drive and then your your brain starts going well you know it's like the what if and um but you're right you kind of you know yeah. you create these you create these stories and then see what's there and hopefully you know i, I wrote a book that you know, my intent, uh, not just to get published, but I, I wrote a book that, you know, I would want somebody to have around Halloween and annually that they could just flip through and it wouldn't take a lot of time. Like, I want to say a one sit read, but pretty much you don't need a lot of time to get through the book. It's like 170 pages. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, just something annually that you might turn to, even if it, even if it just becomes, oh, I like the seven part storyline only and returning yeah. to it. And then, yeah. Yes, that's really great. I like that a lot. So what draws you to the horror genre? Um, you know, it's, um, I have to say, I, I don't have, this should probably be where I have the influences of like, oh, I grew up loving Stephen King, which I read some Stephen King growing up. But yeah. I, I attended NYU in 2011 through 2013 in their dramatic writing program and I was writing plays and screenplays and a lot of my stuff was like family dramas and you know not even saying what became of the plays but I'd have some people some students in the class being like oh I'm so like icked out or I'm like oh I'm so uncomfortable and you really can kind of like create a tone that makes even listening to it like so hard to deal with mm -hmm. which I appreciated but that led some people to go I mean, it turned into like a little small following of people saying, write some horror, write horror, write horror. And I didn't do it at NYU. And I then ended up teaching a class. I'm an adjunct professor. I taught a class, um, an academic writing course that you as a professor can come up with themes. And I pitched horror films. So we watch horror films and they have to write argument papers about them. But what's really healthy about that is attacking the stigma that's out there about horror yes. and, and exploring like you know you know there's so much going on in politics or religion or sexuality and all these so many areas and it's not just you know gore you know uh -huh. films loaded with gore and no substance so I think once I started doing that class and I was fully confident with my film background I was like okay I, I need, this is going to happen at some point. I'm going to, you know, get going on this genre. But I think what in, motivates me to write it is that I think it can be anything. It can be a, a couple, you can write a horror story about a couple having their first child and how difficult that can be. Now, obviously, you'd have to spice it up with some things that yeah. make everybody, <laughs> make fans of the genre go nuts. But yeah. You know, they're all different shades. So, you know, obviously with, with the stuff out there, folk horror and all these, or Peter you know, was saying quiet horror and all this, like there's a lot of uh, shades on the spectrum. So I guess I'm pretty much drawn to that, but also anybody that knows me and my background, I'm attached to, I'm really attracted to like families falling apart, not in real life, but, but in my work. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can incorporate a horror element in there, like, <laughs> kind of what motivates me to continue. 
That is really cool. I, I, I love that answer because there is so much influence that our horror, horror stories can have. They can reflect so much in our society in different ways, different imaginative ways that really kind of highlight uh, prob you know, problems, issues in society. It kind of speaks to the, the underdogs. It can also speak to um, undercurrents that are going on that yeah. we, we notice like in our societies and kind of like enhance them and, um, and bring and spotlight them in a way. And I really like that about horror. That's, what, that's really what makes horror so intriguing to me also. Yeah, yeah. And, and not just in terms of books, but, you know, with, with film, you know, Jordan Peele with doing the socials, basically social horror. And that's very important. You could argue even that what The Purge was attempting to do and its critique of, you know, like our obsession with violence. And then, yeah. you know, but at the, at the same time, you watch something like Midsummer, which is just brutal. Uh -huh. And it's like, essentially, you're like, this, this is a breakup film. It's like, if you <laughs> strip it down to its parts, you could write an essay that's just a breakup film. Um, yes. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the genre has a lot going for for it. I just think what's exciting is, and I don't know that me battling or people I meet, us battling the stigma, what that will ever win because it's so polarizing that there are people out there who won't even, you could be like, no, 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 this is a good one. <laughs> this is really well, well written. And you have some people like it's like they're pledging allegiance to some political camp that they will never look at the other side. And that's unfortunate for them, but you know, yeah. I think there's some great work out there that you know, people should discover. So. I agree. I agree. So what does the act of writing itself mean to you? I, you know, I love it. I, I mean, I, it's been hard to do lately. I have three jobs and a seventh month, seventh month old daughter. So mm -hmm. um, it's one of the few times in my life where I'm like, this is, this is challenging finding time to write now. Yeah. Um, no, but it means everything. I, I, I am, I'm obsessed with it. I love it. Like if I get free time or a day off, I mean, I'll work it out with my wife, but I mean, or I'll just wake up really early. Like I just, I have to do it. And I love to do it. I know that there's plenty of people out there and amazing writers who will announce how much they hate it, but they have to do it. Like, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I want to do it all the time. And not even from some, not even from some like fame obsessed uh yeah i just want to do this full time and be rich it's like that's, i would do it if if i got a memo tonight that said you can't submit your work anywhere else the rest of your life like i'd still with my free time my wife would be like where'd you go <laughs> i'd be at a coffee shop or yeah. whatever you know just jam or the library jamming away and it wouldn't it wouldn't matter because it's just so part of who you are or who i am so yeah i just need to do it and i love just getting lost in um you know, obviously, when you return to something and read it, you, you might go, this is, this, I feel pretty good about this, or this is lousy, but I love the process of getting totally lost. Me too. For like an af afternoon, like, I'm not lost in my focus, like, I have intent, but so lost in like, well, there was two hours and 47 minutes, and you're like, like, where, where, where did I go <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in that moment? But it's so, it's kind of thrilling, because it's, it's, you know, it needs to be done, and it feels like an out-of-body creative experience. I agree. Oh, I, I, I love that, too. It's the passion for it. It's like it just speaks to something, like, in, 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 in inwardly, and it's just fulfilling for that part, inwardly. And it's like, it's even if we can't make anything from it, it's like it's, it's fulfilling in itself. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I say, it, say it not even to brag to people, but, you know, I've seen some people... You know, my my early 40s, but I've worked with some colleagues who are in their 60s or late 60s and actually have some type of like, oh, what am I going to do in retirement? Or it's so boring. And I'm, you know, I mean, if I make it to that age or something, I'm kind of like, well, I'm, I'm my mind and I read and I write like that'll never get, I'll, I'll always be stimulated. So yeah, like I'll always have that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So true. So true. So in your opinion, what is the best TV or movie adaptation of a book? Mm, does it have to be horror? Uh, no, it could be anything. Oh, man. Um, I'm quite fond of actually, you know, his, his second book, or at least I might be getting the order wrong, but uh, Scott Smith, who wrote A Simple Plan, oh. I think that, that, that 
film I think is one of the best films I've ever seen. And then when I've looked at the book, I'm blown away by the writing, but I know he changed, he made some significant changes there. Um, I like, there's a movie called the ice storm, which uh, Ang Lee directed and he directed Brokeback mountain and all that, but that was probably, and he directed sense and sensibility. Really? I think that film in relation to the, um, is superior to the book, which I don't usually see that happen. Um, and that's set in Connecticut. So if you want a Connecticut film, yes, <laughs> uh, set, in, set in the seventies, that, that film really moves me. Wow. Um, but I would say those, those two would be the standouts. Wow. I love that. Mine's is, um, the silence of the lambs for sure. <laughs> oh. But I need to see, I would love to see the movie set in Connecticut directed by Ang Lee cause that he has poetic filmmaking and I would love to experience that movie. Yeah, p please do. And I don't, it, it, it's nice that the question doesn't have to be horror because that movie yeah. is so is so special in terms of like the nuance and the relationships that and then obviously I'm from Connecticut so I'm a little bit biased but um, he just has a he seems to be getting way too much in the technology aspect now and playing around with that which I haven't loved his last few things and that's no judgment but yeah. his first few films like first five or seven films like we're just so he just has a handle on humanity or the way he transmits it that I don't think anybody else can touch. Yeah, that is so interesting. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to watch that for sure. So what yeah. is, what advice would you give to amateur writers about crafting a story that hooks? Oh boy. <laughs> um uh, honestly I I think you can write things at the wrong time. I know that's, I know you're asking like crafting a certain story that hooks, but I think this relates to like, I don't know what your style is or your process is, you know, prior to NYU, like I, I could just sit down and write. I didn't need, I would just like, you know, kind of playwriting kind of background, just kind of free write. And then you go to a program like that and then they want you to play by the rules and structure and do everything. I also, I just think there's a danger to, I don't know, writing something too early. Like I would be patient, like really think about the characters, really think about what your intent's gonna be like. Think about, if even if it's a short story, what is the characters, you know, what are the characters wants? Like, can you, can you have a simple, like yet universal want for that character? It's like, you might not like them, yeah. but something as simple as like, oh, he just wants, he just wants a date with that woman. Okay, so that's like the base of this story. Or he want, he just wants to drink it from the from the liquor store. Like, yeah. it's it'll sound basic, but those basic universal truths like can carry you through whether it's a thousand word story, a five thousand word story. I just I would encourage some patience. I mean, even though I write fast, I'm patient in my like I. I don't necessarily need a pen to be taking all my notes, but I could be, you know, taking a shower or, or drive, taking a drive and I'm be like, my brain's on fire. Yeah. But then I'm kind of like, but then I'm kind of like, oh man, I really want to write this. But then I'm also like, yeah, but I really only have a handle on one character in that family. So like, this is not the time to go chapter one. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> um, so, and I think it, to give that advice, I only mean it in a, you want to write it you want to write with a high degree of confidence not just sit down and be like it kind of has like a well I created something like therefore and then you're going to attempt to save it but mm. I think it becomes harder to save if you don't do a little bit if you're not a little bit patient in the prepping yeah that's my but but I understand everybody has different process regarding outlining. some people don't need to do it my outlining process is, is pretty different like I will write out like a log line if I can do that. Then I do like a mini summary, not like one I'm gonna pitch to a publisher or an agent or anything like that, but just something that I'm like, okay, do I have a handle A to Z of what's gonna go down? Yeah. And of course it could, it could change during the writing process. Um, but I think some people might look at a submission call and race and rush out a story when it's like, okay, that one you really cared about, do you really want to rush through that? No. And it's, it's, <laughs> worth put, it's worth putting it aside 
you know, it's worth worth nurturing. So that's all I would say to people is, you know, be patient, just nurture the, the stories. And obviously in terms of hooks, I mean, I think your stories are as good as who your characters are and if they have clear wants yeah. that you can, you can latch on to. I mean, that doesn't even mean, you, you know, you need to be like that person, but you go, yeah, I know people that are like that. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. I, I love that. The story is worth nurturing and, and forcing it, forcing the, forcing the story to come quickly. It's like, it will never be as authentic and as original and as good as it could have been if we just allow it to kind of marinate in our minds and kind of just sit with it for a while. And I definitely agree with that. It's like, the story will come, but it'll come kind of in its own terms, and we have to wait for it to wait for it to kind of meet that. Yeah, yeah, and 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 sometimes that impatience for some people that dominates you're like, you couldn't wait a day, like yeah. you couldn't wait one more day to like nurture that. And sometimes you know what you if you if given writing time, you could accomplish a lot, even if it's revising or looking at a certain scene or sequence or whatever it may be that, like you know it, it is like a what's the rush um yeah but yeah so true so true <laughs> and here we go the second to last question of the interview okay. <laughs> what character of your book was the hardest to write and why <sighs> you know this this is a this one's a good question i i think thank you uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to answer it in two ways. I'll, I'll put it to you this way. There's a story I wrote. I'm pretty fond of. I know it's like, I get on here and say, I'm like, fond of my stories. It's a little like gag alert, but. Um, it's okay to be fond of them. We're part <laughs> of my story. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, now I have a story um, called the five day fisherman and the, the main character in that that just kind of plays around with, you know, and everybody kind of has a different interpretation of it, not in like any kind of like, oh, this is what it is way. But I think there's some mystery involved with this man. And I just, I like, he's got like a shorthand lingo with this character. Ricky refers to as the girl. And um, they have a real good, you know, dynamic, you know, it's a little, um, she's kind of like the adult in the situation, however, but mm -hmm. I guess, kind of capturing who he is in because it does like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday kind of thing, trying to capture who he is and the, his, like the spirit of his soul um, in short little spurts. And then, you know, obviously when you get to the conclusion of the story, you'll see why yeah. he's like, he's like that or he's become, you know, you, you, you know, I, it, I can't really say it's like one of those, like, if I say something, I'll spoil, spoil it, so I would want people to read. Um, but the basically, the main character in the seven-part storyline, is her name is Sutton Frost, and that we're dealing with self-harm and issues with her father and kind of you know, a school crush and things of that nature. So like I said, I'm in my early forties. I, now I work in school. So I think I have a, a good look at my finger on the pulse of how some of these kids act. And it's not based on anybody I've ever worked with, but yeah. I just wanted to be true to that character. And I think trying to add levels and nuance. And also, like I said, though, it's, you know, really you have a, a little short story or a short moment with them. And then it jumps to three or four short stories. Yeah. And then comes back to them, but with dealing with something as significant as self harm, you, you got to do that in a way that that's respectful of what that process might be like mm -hmm. and the internal behavior. Yeah. So that was tricky. I mean, obviously, if nobody's complained and they they do they do like the seven part storyline, so. <laughs> In, in that regard, I'm pleased. I think the challenge or what's become difficult is people want to see more from that. Yeah. And I'm kind of looking at it from a, well, if I do do it, would I do another collection with short stories around it? And I did think that, but then I was like, maybe that's kind of a cop out. And maybe if I just did a novella about the father and daughter, like a continuation, um, 
I can keep exploring because anybody that's in that zone, I don't care how good your life becomes. Like it's, it's like someone who's a drunk or whatever and then in self harm and things are the threat of it anyway. It like never officially leaves someone. Yeah. And I, and I think I kind of have some unfinished business with the project that I feel good about the book being complete, but I think there's, the door was left like a tiny crack open. Yeah. And I feel like, <laughs> feel like lately, I'm like, I'm like, well, maybe that door's a little bit more open than I thought. And, yeah. and I, I just think the challenge, I don't, not even like a big fan or lover of sequels of anything, to be honest, but I think I do care about those characters and specifically the Sutton character that I think it's worth. And because some readers have said, Oh, I want to see more. I want to know more like what they, what she'd be like in a year or what would be going on in her life. And you can't listen to every and respond to every reader and be like, Oh, sure. I'm going to go write another, write just, another. Just <laughs> like, <for you. laughs> yeah. But it does intrigue me. So and there are other things where somebody's like, oh, it'd be fun if that had a sequel or this had a prequel or this had a, and it's, it's in my head, it's very much, well, no, and not at all. Yeah. But this, this with that character, I, I'm pretty fond of her. And I think there's definitely more to communicate cool. with that. But, but that stuff, and you know, and you're, you're going to discover this if you haven't already with your stories or your future book. It's also going to come down to, you know, is there any kind of demand for it? You know what I mean? Like, would my publisher want it? I don't know. Would would a different publisher want, hey, this is a novella that would be a spinoff from a collection I had out. You know, like, these are the things as a writer that you're like, but like I said, back to, <laughs> I would, I just write to write, like, yeah. any kind of success is great. So this might be something I have to just do anyway. And if anybody picked it up or wanted to read it will be up to <laughs> we'll, we'll see if anybody snags it but it it is feeling like an uh, itch I have to scratch and yeah. it's getting worse and worse <laughs> it's like it's calling to it's calling out to you yeah it, it is and I I'm the, the the funny thing is like I said I'm two months out from the book and you know responses have been so interesting that it's like oh man I did not the last thing I was thinking about once that went to print, like, oh, maybe I'll, I, I really wasn't thinking about it. But I think as a challenge of a writer and to be fair to the characters, there's definitely more, more to say and to say it with more finality and there's room to do that. I love it when an author gives such consideration to their characters because it's like we have a lot of human elements in all these stories with these characters and to have an author that really considers who they are, their what their struggle is and what their continuation could be. I just think that is this, that that is wonderful and that that really uh, helps to put so much depth within the characters and the readers really appreciate that too. So I, I just, I, I hope that you do continue it because it's calling out to you. It's like, there must be something else there. And I bet the readers will love it. Well, thanks. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> All right. Do you have um, do Do you have any stories on the back burner that are just waiting to be written? And if you can share, what can we anticipate from you in the future? That was the last question. <laughs> um. Well, I'm. Without even saying too much, I mean, I can say, I do. I have a novella. I don't have a release date. I just know I've been in talks with a company that, you know, I've just been saying like in interviews in 2022, that's supposed to come out. I'm not trying to be super vague. I just, you know, with contracts and things of that nature, you know, I, I don't want to say 2022 and it's 2023 or something changes. So I am slated to have a novella out in 2022. Um, now that's that. Yeah. So that's, that's an interesting one in the sense of it's, I can say it's called Wicked Blood and that's about three siblings who get stranded at a farmhouse and Ooh. that kind of, yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> <I'm it's, interested. laughs> yeah, so that, that one I'm, I'm pretty excited for. And that one, you know, I, I mentioned the collection, like your Halloween kind of come back to it, Reed. This is definitely, um, 
your one sit read. If you, if somebody commits to it, it's very short chapter, like extremely short chapters. And this is back to what you were talking about with uh, readers or aspiring writers. This one structurally was interesting to me because it's 43 very short chapters and then chapter 44 is super long. Yeah. So it's one of those like you're like racing, 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 <laughs> or like, and it's just all of a sudden this huge ending. And um, yeah, so I slated to have that coming out. Um, I just finished the draft of a YA novel. That's just a little bit. Um, that's another one I'm, I can't say too much, not because I won't, but just yeah. that's been a little bit different because I'm like, the community here, there's so many sites I'm going to or publishers that know it and not accepting some work now, but they'll say no YA. So I'm like, okay, yeah. will <laughs> this live on my computer? And that's okay. But you're like, this one might live on the computer. Yeah, um, for a while. <laughs> so if I don't, um, you know, I'd like to put my focus obviously on helping to raise my daughter. Um, yeah. And then <laughs> You know, hopefully that novella will get a 2022 date. And um, whether I do a novella about this Sutton Frost character, that has been in my mind, or a different one that I might tie the Mothman into in some creative and way that hasn't been done before. Now that's easier said than done. I haven't written anything for it, but Me? that's kind of, swir yeah, yeah, that's swirling in my brain and it's, it hasn't gone away so I'm kind of intrigued but I think I need to do a lot more research not because it's nonfiction, but just to have a little bit more confidence to go this is what my intent is and this is how I can use it um, so that's pretty much the future for now well that is so exciting and wonderful and I'm so happy for you and we are going to go ahead and wrap up the interview and I'm going to ask you well, actually one more question. Tell us where we can find out more about you and about your release. Oh, um, so on Instagram, I am Haddonfield Hanson. So Haddonfield, that's just the made up town in the original Halloween. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love so, it. <laughs> yeah. So if anybody wants, I'm probably most active on Instagram. Um, on Facebook, it's just Eric Hansen. I mean, they're welcome to follow me there. I usually, those are just my like closest friends, but if you're in one of those four related groups, you'd probably find me. And that's kind of good because sometimes we've done, I did a giveaway recently and, you know, gave out two books. And um, so then and Instagram's the same. Um, I have some author events coming up and podcasts coming up. So if they wanted to hear more, kind of just keep track, Instagram is best for the most current updates. Cool. Well, we'll all go and follow Haddonville Hansen. <laughs> and thank you so much, Eric Hansen, for joining us today on this Horror Tree interview with me, the novelette. I really enjoyed talking with you, and we all look, we all want, look forward to reading your uh, new release and your next releases. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording.